Morning, Chillings, Decorators of the Interweb. It's Phil Beckwith, back with a follow-up on um, filling gaps on staircases. As you can tell, we've got a coat of primer, sprayed coat of primer on all this woodwork on the staircase, you can just see it. Now, it was obviously cleaned down and prepped. We've used Zinza 123 Plus. I've used the nailless sprayer. I've used uh, 108 fine finish spray tip. And this is the first coat onto the woodwork. That's drying off nicely. And as I said, I cleaned down all the skirting board stringing, whatever you want to call it on the staircase, cleaned off all that um, silly foam, the expandable foam and cut it back. And I'm going to show you what it looks like when it's cut back. And I'm just going to show you how I fill these edges. I'll only show you a section. It won't be 15 minutes like we normally do. So, Let's have, a, let's have a gander's what we're looking at. So, if you can see here, I cut it back with a, a filling knife, scraped it off, made sure it was all pushed in. It's a nice clean edge, you can see it. And now what I'm doing is going down the stringing. You can just see that, you can see where I'm filling it. Now, this is a fill that will dry off. I can give it a light sand. If it needs a, another bit of a skim and a fill, I will do. And then once I've got another coat of paint on, like the undercoat, stroke another primer, because this is the primer coat, always tell you, always tell you, never fill anything unless you've primed it first. So if I can do this one-handed, good at doing one-handed things while I'm holding a camera. So got a bit of filler and it's the Presto F. If you see what I'm doing, I'm just putting it in. I'm just putting it into that gap there. Let me clean my tool down because it's not easy, not easy one hundred. And then just bring it across itself. Where you've got a gap, come back and build it up. Let's see how clean that is. We do that all the way along. Now what we've got, we've got a problem here. Let's try and get that. That stringing board, you see that there? That stringing board along here is flush. It's actually flush with the plasterboard. So we're gonna lose it, aren't we? We're not gonna have an edge. So when that's set up, Tomorrow, and we give it a, a light sand down. When we come to paint the stringing, it can go onto the wall. But when we come to do the wall, I'll be using a bit of tape to make a new line across there. So let's see how we can go filling that. Right. Pack enough in so it squeezes all the way back come across the face that's not bad at all a bit more there and again like I said to you in the previous video if it needs another fill give it another fill let it set up give it a nib down and refill it don't try and fill it all in one if it doesn't want to go all in one There we go, they're coming onto an edge. So there's an edge there and then it disappears into nothing. So I'm quite happy with that. When that's dry, give it a nib down. Obviously, once you get the paint on, give it another coat of paint. Um, once it's dry, I'll just go a cork bead top to bottom and you're going to say Phil what cork do you use? Well I use the Red Devil one time cork which is an interior exterior cork it's flexible as well and water based so once that's had a sand I'll give it another coat of the Zinza 123 plus once that's dry then I'll go round all these finer gaps along here 
that can just be filled with the cork. So that's where we are with it. So you can you see? All the way up there, nicely done. And once that's nibbed down and sanded, that's a good edge. And thankfully that expandable foam at the back will be a good base for all that filler to sit on. So do you follow? Do you understand? Over and out. Comments, tell me how you do it. Smash that bell if you're already subscribed. If you're not subscribed, please look at some of the other videos. Um, have a recap on what I've done previously. Um, smash that subscribe button if you're interested. So thanks for listening. See you on the next one. Right back, so just doing a follow up. Let's call it part two. I'll call it part two. Um, you saw me earlier on, we were filling that bit of well, silly foam up with um, Presto F. Now, once that was dried, that was day before, once that was dried, came back the next day, because don't forget, I Presto F'd it, then I gave it um, a second coat of um, primer, which was the 123 Plus from Zinza. So just to make sure, I've always said to you, make sure, make sure that you put your primer coats on before you start filling. So all that bare wood that we got on the staircase, it was um, 123 Plus primered, that had all dried off. Then I went back to do the filling up over that silly foam. So you saw me pressed away in it. That was great. Got it as neat as I possibly could. Once it had um, gone off enough, I gave a second coat of 123 plus on all that woodwork. Now, once that was dry, and that was the day before, um, I've come back and we've gone over that area of filler just with a light sandpaper. You know, I like the uh, Merca Gold Flex sandpapers. Another what is it, a 150 um, sanding pad that's probably well used. Went over that area and slight indentation, it had sunk a little bit. So I knew that had happened. Um, and then we just we just counterfill it with um, a very fine surface filler. Now when you say fill, what fine surface filler are you using? I don't like using the word go to. I don't like the word go to at all. But I do use Wix lightweight filler. I'm gonna show you which one it is. It's that one, it's the Wix, can you see that? Wix lightweight filler. Now this is a fraction of the price of um, the Red Devil lightweight filler. Um, you see, it does exactly the same, does what it says on the tin. Now what I did, got me um, filling knives, made sure they're all clean, and I really went to town, just skimming out that little area. I'm trying to show you. Can you see that? We've got an edge there and it disappears to nothing down there. So what I've done, I don't think you can really see it that well, it disappears. So I floated all that area out there. I floated all that area out there with the lightweight filler and this, because it was only a very light skim, that dried quite quickly, which meant that within half an hour to an hour, by the time we'd done all the other little bits and pieces of rubbing down and just checking all this staircase, well, as you see, for spraying, it was ready to spray over. And literally all this area down there was sprayed with two coats of, oh, let's get a still camera, um, two coats of Everol um, Aqua 40. So that's the satin finish. In between drying times, I'll just go around checking it. It's still a bit soft at the moment. Check it, fine pad, just to nib anything off that you see. And also, if you see any areas that you want to refill or um, put a bit of cork in, you can do it. Now I've shown you, there's a picture somewhere of the filler, cork filler that I use, which is actually the Red Devil uh, one time cork. That's brilliant. Now, if you go, oh, I think Paintwell, Crown, places that have got it, it's roughly about two quid a tube. The more you buy, the cheaper it'll be. But I have to say that, cork filler is brilliant you can use it inside and out it's flexible and i'm one that does spray and use cork and sprays over cork within a short space of time and it never cracks i've never had a problem with it shrinking or cracking or crazing hence why i use that red devil one time cork and that's what i've done here i've gone around all of this 
all the way up there. I did it after the first primer coat and I did it again before I got, there you go, look how smooth that is there. There's no edge, I've got an edge and then it disappears. Um, yeah, I've recorked all that top to bottom all the way down. See, I don't want to walk around with that. But what I'll do when I come back to do these walls, um, I'll just tape, tape, tape it up. I get some delicate tape, take that top edge all the way up there. I'll make a new line on that to follow the old original wood. And then that will be nicely painted down. And the walls are having um, up to the up to the five. So there we are. I've done it. Uh, it's quite impressive. Silly foam backfilling it. Um, somebody did mention on a, a previous video about wetting it in, which is a good idea. If you've got areas where you're using your silly foam, wet it in with a bit of water first because it does a bond and adhere to it. But what I did that I didn't tell you on the first part of the videos, um, I just, I, where I'd scraped it all off, I just went around with a brush full of Zinsser Guards just to seal where the bare plaster was because I knew that this chalky, cheap contract paint on the wall would soak in any moisture of any fillers that I was putting on. So any of these top edges that were raked out, I did just go literally a brush full of Zinsser Guards all the way round. Just to make sure I've got a nice sealer edge for filling on to. Hi, what do I tell you? Put some um, primer on before you fill it, and the Zinsser Guards is brilliant. I don't want people saying, oh, it's the same as PVA. It's not the same as PVA. I could argue this till the cows come home. It's not the same as PVA. For a start, it's a lot more money than PVA. But the other thing is, Zinsser Guards is alkali resisting, which PVA is not alkali resisting, and that's why you can put it onto your bare plaster and um, surfaces like that which you can't really do with PVA when you start coming to paint. PVA and paint don't mix. Don't let anybody tell you that you can PVA bare plaster walls or anything like that. Oh, God, we can have an argument about that can't we? We can have an argument until the cows come home but we're not, we don't do PVA in. PVA is only suitable for wetting in um, when you've got chopped out and brickwork and you've got a bit of brown in to fill it all up that sort of situation, or plasterers use PVA. The decorator does not use PVA. The decorator does not PVA bare plaster walls, or anything like that, or even putting PVA into emulsions. Times many I see people saying about putting PVA into paint to make it better. But yeah, all right then, go and get on your horse and get back to that rodeo. Cowboys, cowboys. So there we are, we're done and dusted. So, I've talked to you, I've uh, done a follow up, and I'll say thanks very much. Comments, press the bell, like, use the all the usual. So, see you on the next one.